Good afternoon, Year 11. I hope you all had a good break. So, as I've said to you before, we will be starting this term to focus on Romeo and Juliet. Of course, you started it in September last year, which was an awful long time ago now. So, at the time, we focused on plot, we focused on character, we focused a bit on theme, we had a look at the extracts, how you analyse them, which we know is very similar to how we analyse any extract, whether it's in language or literature. So, what I would like you to do is I would like you to start today by writing down as many quotations as you can remember for Lord of the Flies. So the starter activities you'll know we've been doing so far this year have focused on a range of different texts rather than just the one we're focusing on at that point. And it's just to make sure that you're constantly bringing forward that knowledge for all of your literature texts and for your language exams as well. So as many quotations as you can remember for Lord of the Flies, I would like you to pause this while you write down all of the ones that you know. So if you struggled for quotations, here are a range that you could have had. So remember all of these quotations on these sheets that we've used in lessons before are the ones that are in the booklet that are attached to your home learning. So when you go into class charts, when you have a look at your home learning, which is of course done week by week, this document, there is also a document there which gives you all of your key quotations, as well as explanations for them as well. So please do return to that. I'll also add these. Um, so I'll add these slides that I've got here for each of your core texts so that you can have a look at them as well. Some of these quotations have been shortened slightly. But remember, a quotation can be one word, it can be two words, it can be three words. So we've spoken before about how effeminate is a really quote, good quotation for Romeo because actually what it does is it sets them apart from the other male characters who live their lives by these dangerous masculine codes of honour. So please don't feel that they need to be long. So for Ralph, for example, you could have had fair and um, you could have had lowered himself. You could have had um, furtive for Roger, for example. They can be incredibly short as long as they are meaningful. So the focus for this lesson and the lesson tomorrow is to revise the plot of Romeo and Juliet. So as I said before, it's been a long time since you've done Romeo and Juliet. Part of your homework, of course, has been to focus on Romeo and Juliet. So um, hopefully you have some confidence with it. But we need to make sure that you have a really secure understanding of plot before we can go on to focus on character and theme in detail and even context. So what you'll see on this slide is you'll see that there is a timeline, uh, very sparse. There's not an awful lot on there, but there is a timeline of some key events within Romeo and Juliet. Um, so this is your starting point, really. So these events you should know about. You should also know the importance of these events as well. But what I would like you to do is if you have a look at where it says task, I would like you to bullet point which important events and ideas are missing. So you can use the comments below to elaborate on the point. So, for example, number one is already in place. So you'll see that number one is the Montagues and the Capulets fight. So it starts, Act 1, Scene 1, it starts with Montague and Capulet servants fighting in the street, and then Tybalt and Benvolio both turn up, each representing either side of the warring families. So one thing that you could consider that you could elaborate on that with is point one that's on the slide, what does the prince declare after the fight? So what I would think about there is I would think about the fact that the prince declares death, doesn't he? So he declares death for those who are disturbing the streets in the future because of course he wants peace within Verona. So the reason that is important is because you know it shows the magnitude of this conflict between the families doesn't it which we've been told about in the prologue but it's also important because when Romeo kills Tybalt Romeo is not killed he is banished. Um, so think about the importance of that. Think about why that might be. Why would the prince change his mind there? What relationships might have influenced it? So each of these have a knock on effect. They relate in some way to the rest of the play. So do think carefully about forging links from act to act. So you can see the second one. It says, how do Romeo and Juliet meet? So is Romeo in love with another before Juliet? So you can see that prompts you there to be thinking about Rosalind. And of course, Rosalind has although she's only mentioned briefly, she has a really important role in the play because we 
think about Romeo and Juliet's love in relation to Romeo's love for Rosalind before. So we speak about the different imagery associated with each of them and what that shows, you know, how does um, the oxymoron, so all of those cliches that he used to describe his feelings for Rosalind, how does that compare to this celestial imagery that he uses in relation to Juliet? So what you were doing is you were adding to that timeline. Now, you might copy and paste that into a document and um, and add different information on it, or you might do your own timeline. So you might decide to do one and present it in whatever way you would like. But the information on there is very limited. So use the questions on the slide to help you add more information and think about the significance of it. But also use your own ideas as well, because you will still have an understanding of the plot of Romeo and Juliet. So hopefully at this point you have a detailed plot summary of Romeo and Juliet. So your timeline should of course have the key events and also why they're important where possible as well. So what I would like you to do as the next phase is I would like you to include a quotation to represent each part of the play. So, for example, when the Montagues and the Capulets fight at the beginning, I want you to find a quotation to represent that. When Romeo falls in love with Juliet, I would like you to find a quotation to represent that. So you can do that using the quotes list, which is, of course, attached to your homework, or you can do it using the quotation support sheets that I've also added to our Google Classroom. So you could have a point for each of these, you know, solely using those resources to support you. But also you can find your own. You can have a look online. If you've got a revision guide, you can have a look through there. You can have a look on Quizlet if you would like. There are so many different sources for finding quotations for Romeo and Juliet. But as your first port of call, I would always advise you to use the ones on the quotes list, which we use in lessons. Because when we use the staff, when we do the starter activities, I only use quotes from the resources that I give you because actually I think it's if you try to look for too many it can feel quite overwhelming um, so as a challenge there as well can you add any other quotes which you feel are significant to the plot so when you did your timeline you might have found that you added points that that were not on here so if you have some quotations to support those ideas as well then please add them for the rest of this lesson and for tomorrow's lesson, you are going to be focusing on Seneca learning. So I have set you an assignment which focuses on the plot of Romeo and Juliet. So what I would like you to do is I'd like you to go to the assignment section of our Seneca classroom and complete the plot summaries quizzing for Romeo and Juliet. The allocation for this you will see is between 60 and 100 minutes. Um, so 100 minutes is really the longest it should take. So what you have is you have the rest of today's lesson, however long you have that, and you also have all of tomorrow's lesson as well. So what I want you to make sure you were doing is in your lesson slot for tomorrow, I'd like you to make sure that you spend that full 60 minutes quizzing on Seneca, because what I will do then is I will have a look at that, and that will support me in determining what we need to focus on next. Because if there is a certain element that all of you are focusing on, well, that will be the focus of our next lesson. So it's important that you do spend all of tomorrow's lesson on that Seneca learning. You should have time to begin quizzing now. Um, if, you, if you don't have any more time now, that's absolutely fine. You can use tomorrow's lesson and you can sort of do five minutes here and there when you are free. If you're not part of the classroom, then you should join using the link that I have here. I'll also put the link on Google Classroom as well, just in case you struggle to access it from the PowerPoint. So that will be tomorrow's lesson. And then on Thursday, you will have a new recorded lesson and you will have another one on Friday as well. If you do have any questions, then please do remember just to contact me. Send a message on Google Classroom because actually the question that you're asking, it may help other people as well. If you don't want it to be a public question, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to do it on the newsfeed section. You can send it to me privately or if you would rather email me, that's absolutely fine. If you're really struggling, you'd like to arrange a phone call, that's fine as well. You just need to let me know.